Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll learn the basics of the Next.js image component and working with remote images. Now, before we write any code, let's look at the Next.js docs. And we can see the image component here in the Next.js docs. If we scroll down, we see a simple use of the image component. So we import it, and then it needs a source, width, height, and alt attributes. Now, if we scroll down a little further, there are more props listed, but in this chart, we'll see the first four that we listed and saw in the first example are the ones that are required. And we go just a little bit further down, they have a required prop section where they again re-emphasize this, that source, width, height, and alt are indeed what is required and what is needed. But if we scroll just a little bit further, as they describe the source props and the other props, it does note that when using an external URL, and we will be for our images from the Pexel API, you must add it to the remote patterns in next.config.js. So we're going to need to take a look at that. One other thing I want to highlight though, because we are using remote images, and here it says the width and the highlight, or the width and the height represent the rendered width in pixels and the rendered height in pixels. But when working with remote images, this is actually incorrect. And I wish they would note that here or give a footnote because if we go to optimizing images in the Next.js docs, where they talk about remote images, it does mention that the width and height attributes are used to infer the correct aspect ratio of the image and avoid layout shift. The width and the height do not determine the rendered size of the image file. So that's important as we set these attributes on our images because we are working with remote images in our project. Back on the other page where we looked at the image component and they were talking about the width and the height, remember that link to remote patterns that I showed. So let's click that link. Let's quickly look at a remote pattern. We add this in the next.config.js file, and then we have images and then note remote patterns. And inside of this remote patterns array in the config file, we have an object here that provides a remote pattern. Now we can provide more than one remote pattern, but this is important. So we need to list the protocol, the host name. If there is no port, we list an empty string and then the path name. So we'll need to break down our Pexels API URLs to fit a remote pattern that we define for it in Next.js. Now I'm back at the documentation for the Pexels API, and I'm looking at the curated photos, but we could also be looking at the searchable photos as well. Either way, we want to look at the example response. And when we get the URL that we want to set up in our remote patterns in Next.js, that's not going to be the URL that we see here for photos with www.pexels.com. Actually, remember, we're using the large image, so we're getting that from the source object from the photo. And here, let's look at the URL, and it comes from images.pexels.com. So our URL that we set up in the remote patterns is going to be HTTPS, and then we're going to have images.pexels.com, and then we're going to have slash photos slash, and whatever comes after that slash after photos is going to be a wildcard. So we can go ahead and just give that wildcard indication in that Next.js config as well. So let's go back to VS Code and set up that remote pattern for this URL. I've got VS Code open and I am in the next.config.js file of our project. And so here we want to start inside this object that is next config, next config. Right now it is just an empty object. But inside here we want to say images and then we want an object there and then we want to say remote patterns. Now this is an array because you could have more than one remote pattern per project. Each remote pattern is defined with its own object. And it's going to have a protocol. And then that protocol is going to be HTTPS. Then it's going to have a host name. And this host name is going to be images.pexels.com. Then we're going to have a port, and that is an empty string. And then we're going to have a path name. Here, we're going to say slash photos slash and then two asterisks indicates the wildcard. Essentially, we're good with anything that comes after slash photos slash in the URL. 
And with this complete, we'll be able to bring in those images from Pexels and optimize them with the Next.js image component. Now let's go back to the components directory that we created inside of the app directory. Here we want to create a new file, and I'm going to call this IMG and then container with a capital C dot TSX. So we're making our own image container component, and we're going to use the Next.js image component inside of it. So I'm going to start at the top with an import type, and here I want the photo type we defined inside of our models slash images file. After that, I want to import image. This is going to come from next slash image. Now I need to define a type for this component as it's going to receive a prop. So I have type props, set this equal to an object that has a photo property, and it's going to be the photo type. So a very easy props to define. Now let's go ahead and say export default function image container, and inside we'll receive the photo, and then we can just show once again the props over here. So with that said, we're now ready to create our return inside of this functional component. So we'll have a return and parentheses. Now here we're really ready to grab some code from our pre-existing gallery component because everything we had inside of our map here, which was our div that was empty and it was just a gray square in the last lesson, we'll go ahead and cut that out of here for now. We'll come back and put our image component in here after we've completed it. But now we can pull this back to the image component we are creating because we're going to return that div as a parent for everything else. So let me go ahead and create some space between the opening and closing tags. I'll scroll this over and press Alt Z so any code wraps down that needs to. And now this will be a simple component to start out and hopefully we can keep it that way. We'll use the Next.js image component. I'll come down to the next line and we'll set the source attribute, and this will be equal to the photo.source.large. After that, we're going to use the alt attribute, and this will be photo.alt. And after that, we have a width and height. Now I'm going to set this to kind of an arbitrary number. We already set uh, 250, I believe, in our columns for the grid, so I'll just say width equals 250. Now I want to do this to start out because again, this is going to reserve the space. It's not saying that this remote image is actually going to be 250 pixels wide or 250 pixels tall, but it does reserve that aspect ratio space. And that's what Next.js wants to do is eliminate any shift in the layout as this loads. So it reserves that space for it. Now we will adjust this in the future, but we're just starting out with these four required attributes. So now that we have our image component, a basic one complete, we're ready to import this into our gallery. So let's go back to the gallery component, scroll to the top where we can import our other component for the image. So image container, and it'll come from dot slash image container. And now we can use that where we had the div here. So it's going to be in image container, it's going to receive a photo, and that photo is just going to equal the photo that we have right here as well. And then we just need to close the container out. So that's really all we need to do to update this with an image container of our own that essentially just wraps a div around the Next.js image container. And of course, by doing that, we have a little bit more control over the CSS here that we're applying, and we will apply some more in the future. So now let's go ahead and see if we've got our project running. We do not, so let's go ahead and run the project once again, and we'll take a look at what we've got so far. So now I'll hold down the control key and click localhost 3000 here in the terminal. It should launch now in Chrome. So I'll pull that up and we're pulling images in. Now notice they don't fit the squares we created perfectly at all. Some of them are overflowing quite a bit. Some of them are staying kind of within the square. Most of them are overflowing a little bit. So we're going to fix all of that in the next lesson.